you can't give what you don't have you have to certainly you have to get that skills certainly. and the fact where um i feel like i i give out always what i have like on a daily basis because i have these people around me and i know i'm always impacting i don't give up like i don't give up if i want to do something i try even if it's going to take me a while oh, wow. but i still try to do it because i you know even the bible said it write the vision make it plain i always have my vision planned and i look for strategies so i follow it step by step for me um, the challenges i i think i had i had that challenges because i started with zero like zero naira zero 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 no. <laughs> Hello everyone, good morning and welcome to Business Connect, brought to you by 100 Talk for your business success. Good morning everyone and welcome, welcome again to another episode of Business Connect. If you're just joining us for the first time, Business Connect is here every Wednesday by 9 a.m. on your favorite Metro FM 97.7. And what is Business Connect? Business Connect is the highly engaging and highly stimulating radio show that brings together an online radio audience with amazing entrepreneurs. Each week we meet with so many entrepreneurs and they just tell their story, their journey, tell us all about entrepreneurship and how they've been able to, you know, go through their journey so far. Last week, if you joined us, we had EME Today Martins. We had Mide Martins, and she, she's the host of the Entrepreneurship Block. And she spoke to us about the rising insecurity in Nigeria and the role the media plays. She's actually a content strategist. So if you, if you missed last week, well, hang on for this week. This week, we have Olu, we have Temi Tokpe Oluwa Jimmy. She's the head, the team lead of Indigo Crystal Concepts, and she's also a past winner of the 25 Under 25 Awards for Event Planning. And today she's going to be talking to us about the rise of the event planning management policies for the growth or the diminishing of the industry. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after the short break. My name is Rotimi Peters. I manage operations and partnership for SMO 100 Africa. SMO 100 Africa is actually um, a social enterprise which is established to ensure that small business owners, startups, entrepreneurs, irrespective of their background, irrespective of their location, irrespective of their financial status, actually have the capacity to start their business, to scale their business, to thrive and ensure that their business is profitable and doesn't die. So we realized that um, entrepreneurs and business owners actually need information to help them make informed decisions. They need information to understand the trends in the markets. They also need information to do a whole lot of things. So we created platforms that ensure that young entrepreneurs have access to information by creating a blog site which is 100talks.ng that celebrates the youth culture and also um, celebrates and identify young entrepreneurs. So this blog actually rolls out content on a daily basis as regards happening in the world of entrepreneurship and business. So you can actually head on to www.100talks.ng to read and to see content that are insightful, in-depth, and, um, and informative about entrepreneurship. Also, we have a platform for women only where you can actually go to read about a lot of content, in-depth, insightful, informative content from, for women, which deals on the day-to-day -day activities or the day-to-day -day lifestyle of women, ranging from your lifestyle to your health, to your business, to your family. Head on to 100women.ng to read about this. We also have a platform that manages PR for small businesses and ensure that your business actually has the right brand identity and also it's able to reach its target audience. Bicoms does all of this for you. We believe with these combinations, you should be able to get the best of your business. All right, welcome back. Welcome back to Business Connect. If you're just joining us, you've not missed anything. Um, business Connect is a radio show that brings together an online audience of entrepreneurs with 
amazing entrepreneurs radio audience to just listen and learn so much from different entrepreneurs that we have every week this week we have with us timmy talk by oluwa jimmy and she's the head of the team lead of indigo um, crystal concept and she's also a past winner of the um events planning category for the 25 under 25 awards um she'll be speaking to us about the rise of the new events management policies for the growth or diminishing of the industry. Now, before we speak to Tim Topper, we're just gonna head over to the 100 Talks website to see what's new on there. So the 100 Talks website, what we've done as a company with 100 Talks is to actually provide a platform, a media platform for entrepreneurs to just engage with. We have articles there, we have video content, we have you know, so much um, um, conversations, we have different shows on there, so you can head over to our YouTube channel as well. It's 100talks.ng on YouTube and also our um, website www.100talks.ng to see what's latest and the newest for all entrepreneurs. You can also head over to our website, our, our women platform, which is 100women.ng. We learned so much about women empowerment and one of the latest articles on there is myths and facts about acne. Um, this is so important as women, you know, that we go through so many um, changes in our body and it's so important to just learn the myths and also the facts of about acne. So head over to our website, it's www.100women.ng to learn so much more about all women empowerment. All right, we're going to go straight to talk to Timmy Tokwe this morning. Good morning, Timmy Tokwe. Good morning. How are you feeling? <laughs> <laughs> fine great 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 it's lovely to have you here so i've read your bio and it's just amazing so just tell us a bit more about yourself and um yeah what you do all right i'm a certified event planner and venue stylist and um, this is something that i i do with passion and the fact that you you know creativity is not um it's not something you just want to jump into. You need to acquire a lot of skills in order for you to do that. And the fact that we also have an academy where we train and um, you can't give what you don't have. You have to certainly you have to get that skills. Certainly. And the fact where um I feel like I I give out almost what I have like on a daily basis because I have these people around me and I know I'm always impacting you know, of course there's a need for me to also improve. So I have the certification to also back my event business. Um I have um, hospitality management certifications. I'm also a member of an association, a professional association in Nigeria, HAPOEM. And um, I'm currently um, working on doing a program on CMIC, which is um, for mm. coaching business, just to improve in my coaching um, skills and all that. And also working on an international certificate in order for the academy to be accredited. Um, in order to help us, so we have. I have like a whole lot. I, I'm sure time will permit me to to mention all that. But it's just for the the growth of the business, and of course, you have to improve yeah, for the improvement constant. of the business and and whole in order for for us to stand out and truly give what we promise. That's amazing. I mean, I mean, such an impressive bio to be honest. You know, so many <laughs> um, certification. I know a lot of people just think event planning is just you know just go and plan events but actually you know it's hearing from you that you know you've got some qualifications for that that's really amazing so how did it all start i mean have you always been an event planner or you know tell us the story about how how it all started how indigo um concept was actually crystal was actually birthed okay that's really an interesting story and it's something i think i'm proud i'm proud to share <laughs> <laughs> yes i'm proud well my wasn't bet out of passion because i hear a lot of people tell me i have passion for this this is why i want to do this my wasn't like that I, I, because i really didn't know what it means i didn't know what it is i i want to do or what it is i like to do mm -hmm. is actually called event planning and management i just knew that okay i just like to see party go well i don't know what it takes but there's something i I'd, i'm used to if i want to venture into something i like to get the skills and i like to go for the best so i i 
took my time to enroll for the course and after the course i did something very amazing i gave myself like a two years non-paid internship so i worked with a top events professional and i was with him for two years uh, so in between that i was just an intern after that i grew up to be a coordinator after that i wasn't paid <laughs> after that i i became a supervisor then later I graduated to be a project manager and that yeah. has been like um, that has been like a step that I'm really very proud of because whatever it is I'm doing today it was those things I did during the period and it also helped my confidence because I used to be a reserved person like I'm really very reserved but the period where I had to do all of all those things is always pushing me to, to do, do things more. I never believe I could do go and prepare proposals go and do this and I'm like how do I do this even after when it taught us all of those things in class but doing it real life you know and I had to take those steps though it was a tough one you know considering the the logistics and what it should take me to always go to the office but i actually made it worthwhile for myself because i knew what i wanted from the beginning yeah. and that helped me a lot and that was one of the reasons why i when i started my own academy i made up my mind i was not going to allow a lot of people go through some of the things i go through due to ignorance mm. and oh, you mean you mean you mean um people in terms of like um um, party people that want to have parties mm -hmm. okay no no i we have an academy okay. where we train mm -hmm. and you so. know well the way people see the event industry is actually not the way it is at the back end mm. so people believe oh let me just acquire it's not just to plan the event do this and do they that and they don't really don't know that you have to go through some things so we take our time to actually explain these things so it is not just talking it is because i have experienced it amazing amazing you've definitely given me a whole different you know view of employment planning and all so as um, an event planner what's your typical you know what is what are the challenges that you actually go through as an event planner because i know that you know like you said a lot actually goes into you know planning an event and all that people don't see so what what are your biggest challenges in your in your line of business and in your industry well the event industry is um don't let me use the word oversaturated because i believe everyone has a space and there's mm -hmm. something unique about yeah. each and every one of Definitely. us um you know the part where you truly want to bring out your uniqueness and you're only giving the platform to do that it is either you you have to um go the extra mile which might not be convenient mm. you know um the event industry of course you need people and you need you need people to trust your brand yes, in definitely. order for you to attain that um mm -hmm. big job mm -hmm. so what happens to the people who they they don't have these people they don't have this circle of people who can pay the millions mm. they are trying to just um follow their passion and get out from where they are so they could attract other people mm -hmm. so it's um it could take a lot of process mm -hmm. you have to either do a lot of marketing mm -hmm. and let's talk about the fact that marketing requires money yes <laughs> yes yeah, so someone who has used the little they have to learn the skills so they still need more money so for me um the challenges i i think i had i had that challenges because i started with zero like zero naira zero 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 no, <laughs> no. i mean capital is always a but i mean like i don't even know what is what to call it if it's capital know, zero <laughs> or zero zero like i really started with zero no support from anyone if people don't even understand what i was trying to, to do, do they yeah. don't understand so i had to go through the stress i used my first job that i just got i used the money to first of all go and do business card did the card I had to okay save up money again to register the business and after that okay trying to now gain the visibility mm -hmm. uh, was another thing because of course I have these things upstairs I can do it I know what to do I want to do it attracting this client there was a day I had an issue where I was supposed to meet someone at four um four points mm -hmm. and I was worked out I had my shoe right inside my bag and I have my slippers. But because I was really very late, by the time I got there, I didn't even remember I was wearing the slippers. So the, the woman just like, 
ah, what happened? Because I know myself that I look like an house girl. <laughs> <laughs> With the way I dress, I'm like, what happened? And I was supposed to go for a strategy meeting because meeting. then I was confused about a lot of things. People were not ready to actually help. Explain and help. You understand? So I had to, I was just confused and I needed to talk to someone. So I happened to win a strategy section. But now, see, my parents actually almost killed the whole thing. Fine, there was no money now to actually pay for uber i had to manage myself to get there because i really wanted these things so mm. for me i had that challenges of finance mm. from the beginning but because i'm a good fighter i don't give up like <laughs> i don't give up if i want to do something i try even if it's going to take me a while oh, wow. but i still try to do it because i you know even the bible said it's write the vision make it plain i always have my vision planned and i look for strategies so i follow it step by step Amazing. So what do you love most about your job before we go on a short break? <laughs> okay. I like the fact that um, when I do a job and the client is happy. Yeah. Like they are happy and they give me positive feedback. There are times where we've actually done job and the whole guests will be giving us positive feedback, client positive feedback and I will sit down and I'll be looking at myself and not make more new. <laughs> 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 like, I don't make money. Although those were those period, I think it was because um, there was no proper structure when it comes to how to gain generate income for the mm. business. I think that was then. But I like the fact that I make my clients happy. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm ready to go any length for them, in as much as I undertake that job. Amazing, amazing. So we're gonna go on a short break now. If you have any questions for Timmy Tokwe, please call 0818202583 or 0810608181. The number again is 0818202583 or 0810608181. I'm, I'm learning so much from Timmy Tokwe and I'm sure you have so many questions for her as well. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after the break and we're going to discuss this new policies event management policies are they diminishing the um the uh, industry or for the growth of the industry don't go anywhere we'll be right back after the short break my name is rotimi peters i manage operations and partnership with smo android africa smo android africa is actually um, a social enterprise which is established to ensure that small business owners, startups, entrepreneurs, irrespective of their background, irrespective of their location, irrespective of their financial status, actually have the capacity to start their business, to scale their business, to thrive and ensure that their business is profitable and doesn't die. So we realized that um, entrepreneurs and business owners actually need information to help them make informed decisions. They need information to understand the trends in the markets. They also need information to do a whole lot of things. So we created platforms to ensure that young entrepreneurs have access to information by creating a blog site which is 100talks.ng that celebrates the youth culture and also um, celebrates and identifying young entrepreneurs. So this blog actually rolls out content on daily basis as regards happening in the world of entrepreneurship and business. So you can actually head on to www.100talks.ng to read and to see content that are insightful, in-depth and, um, and informative about entrepreneurship. Also, we have a platform for women only where you can actually go to read about a lot of content, in-depth, insightful, informative content from, for women, which deals on the day-to-day -day activities or the day-to-day -day lifestyle of women, ranging from your lifestyle to your health, to your business, to your family. Head on to 100women.ng to read about this. We also have a platform that manages PR for small businesses and ensure that your business actually has the right brand identity and also it's able to reach its target audience. Bicom does all of this for you. 
we believe with these combinations you should be able to get the best of your business welcome back to business connect if you're just joining us you've not missed so much um we've just been speaking to timmy toko Jimmy, and she's been telling us all about her journey in event planning and how important it is to get some certification she's gotten some certification to actually you know improve her credibility she has an academy where she trains people and gives event planning and management skills as well so we're just going to go straight to the question of the dating top and we're going to ask you so obviously since um, COVID-19 and everything the events planning industry definitely you know took I mean it hit uh, I, I would say if you agree with me that yeah. yeah definitely hit you know so how did that really affect your business and what what policies do you think that have have come in play and you know that could have been maybe to the detriment or to the benefit of the um, industry okay so um for that the how it has affected our business we could say that because we no longer have the large crowd um events like we do mm -hmm. and of course we make more money from that <laughs> the larger the crowd the yeah. more the money so uh we understand the situation of the 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 country and we we don't have a choice than to also abide by the rules and you know we, we discovered that even some clients take advantage of this whole thing mm -hmm. and they go like any anything they just they be like ah there's covid outside now there's no money there's no money there's no money you know and um, the fact that for us as an event planner truly when it comes to some of the things we do it's not really just about the crowd because the same energy i'm going to put into handling a 200 guest events is what i'm going to do the only difference is just the manpower maybe um, i'll reduce the number of team i need we for need to for execute the, this job yeah. but of course it doesn't stop me from doing a simple decor of um, 100 guests and to cost one million naira and with that same one million naira you can still do a 500 guest so it still has to do with the details but clients don't understand so they believe oh we are doing 100 then it should be lesser Less. and not knowing that it doesn't work that way so in, in a way that also affects our business because you have to now take your time to explain of course we will eat now we need money and you can't just um, say you don't want to you don't want to do any events because you can't have the large gathering you have to just accept it the way it is and try to walk around the whole thing and also for the vendors it doesn't really work well for them because of the number the way you want to do a, a 100 guest event the, mm -hmm. the, your rec the demand the request of um, what you need from them will definitely be low and of course they will make more money from there from that so that in a way affects us a lot and we just hope we pass this phase anyway <laughs> but have you been it has ha have there been any government policies or uh, you know the, just tell us a bit more about some government policies that, that we put in place out. whether the good or bad <laughs> Okay, um, I'm going to I'm going to say it too. <laughs> All right. So, um, also um, on a sincere note, um, the Nigerian Safety Commission has really been, um, they've been amazing. You know, they have a lot of safety measures, um, mm -hmm. to help us. You know, my safety, your safety, everyone's yes. safety is what is important. And of course, we need our lives to be able to do the event. The event so they have a lot of policy which is really helping. Where they give us the the um the terms of. A hall, if a hall shouldn't take more than um, 50 um, capacity of what they could accommodate mm -hmm. on a norm. You know, that gives us the room to be able to um, give space and, yeah. of course, um, have that intimacy feeling at events. And, of course, the safety measures where they, they give them the rules to also have the hand washing. Because, on the, you know, you know people now everybody don't just want to they just felt it's just a face mask thing but because they have to make the whole do all of all those compliance. things so and of course they also organize a, a um, like a training for event professionals where they also talk about um, okay. safety and how um, even from our own hand as um, the event professionals we can also work around these things so even if your client is not listening to you you as a planner there are certain things that you have to also imbibe so even when we are working on our budget list now we have COVID-19 safety um, prevention 
plan for it where we have to make sure that for every event this is provided mm. like uh, we have it even in our agreement now that you have to look mm. into this, this, into this. Into okay this. so the other part where we could say that some of the policies are affecting us is where they now tell um people to make a certain payment for them to host an event so what it means is you need to be rich to do an event in nigeria if you know they'll come and knock your door or you come down to your venue you know yeah, things I've like heard, that I've heard some yes. stories like that yes yes yeah. so, so things like that brings in fear and at the same time in the long run it's really going to affect our finance as event planners it's really mm. really going to affect us and we just hope they look into it because it's really it's I, I think they are really acting on it and it, you have to pay aside the the regular um, money we pay to register the event mm -hmm. there's still another policy that says that um you have to pay a certain amount of money so we keep hearing new policies every day and you know all these things begin to dig in into the profits begin to dig in into clients when they know they are going to pay 10k for this they will reduce your money and even the whole the whole now they look at all those money they are going to be paying based on the law it also affects them so, so they, are, they don't even want to give you discounts. By the time they tell you tax for this, tax for this, tax for this, the money is gone. So they are left with nothing. So those things get to affect us. There are times where we know that we can get a discount for our clients. You understand? If we refer yeah. them to use a particular hall, it doesn't work that way anymore because they also have they a lot of to. tax. They also have a lot of things they pay. And those things are really really okay, affect because that even leads to my next question about how you know um th th there's this nigerian nigerian wedding hype where like you know every once you include weddings to something the price just goes times i don't know times 100 so uh, do you think that um i mean you've kind of answered the questions a bit but do you think that you know it's 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 a bit i, I think it's overpriced or it's it's is that really well, is there is there actually a lot that goes into, you know, wedding planning and all that? Well, we we are all in Nigeria, and we can tell the rate at which um, prices of things increase on a daily basis. Yes, it increases on a daily basis. So you can't um, you can't blame vendors when their prices change, or when there's a, there's a change in their. Um, invoice or quotations and all you can't blame them because we all know that prices changes and the fact where we think vendors are trying to um, just take advantage of clients because it's a wedding it doesn't work that way there's a whole lot that goes on when it comes to wedding comparing to other events wedding is an emotional event and you don't want um, you don't want to be the one to make someone um, unhappy on their big day due to one or two mistakes from your hand. There are some events that you can actually mm. overlook some things, but when it comes so to you're weddings, saying that you so, don't so, want it's, to. so wedding is more emotional. So yes, it's, yes. it's the, the crave for perfection is there. It's, okay. it's there. So we understand it even more now. Yeah. That the crave and so you know wedding planners are justified. By the amounts yes we have <laughs> <laughs> yes because we <laughs> yes we, we have actually because you know referring vendors we must, we must have um, done a lot of research we we know the questions we ask these vendors we know what we expect from them so if you as a client want to talk to these vendors you are not going to be seeing things from our own angle you are just going to be interested in the what's the total mm -hmm. but we know the things we are requiring from them so of course the prices is going to be different vendors treat clients directly differently from the way they treat planners because we have a signed agreement with them but for clients you can do anything they like with you that's great amazing our time is really fast spent really i'm just going to rush to, um what do you how do you see the event planning industry in the future any future plans for yourself for the industry you know okay so um for myself uh uh, I think I also want, I also want to improve more on um, my coaching skills and the fact that I, I really want to um, bet a lot of professional event planners who knows their onions. So I'm definitely working more on that. Mm -hmm. And also for the business itself, we are putting a lot of 
strategies in place in order for us to stand out as a brand and for the event industry in general there's a whole lot going on and we can see the changes vendors are trying to have like a collaboration a collaboration um platform events professionals event planners are coming together the caterers are coming together they are trying to come up with policy that would benefit everyone so we believe um, the event industry is really going to be a very productive Amazing. industry Amazing. thank you so much Tim Sokwe. i mean i've probably yeah. learned so much from you thank in you. terms of even graduate qualifications and i like your drive and you definitely seem like a fighter so you know wishing you so well in the business and you know if you can you can get on to you have a social media handle for um indigo yes concept. indigo crystal concept that's the main brand and we have the indigo crystal events academy that's the academy then we have decor by indigo which we are trying to um, separate our decor so people can see more Amazing, amazing. So reach them out on all social media platforms. And my name is Pelumi. Me. I've been your host for today. Unfortunately, we have to go and <laughs> just reach out to all our if you want to join the SME Hundred Africa community, reach us out at SME Hundred Africa 25 on the 25 hundred women dot ng and hundred talks dot ng. I'll see you guys next week. Have a good Wednesday. Bye. Bye.